good to her. I, I want to hear the story of the robbery. All the from... robbery. Oh, that's too long. <laughs> I want to grow. Oh, I want to hear. Oh, this one that I had down here. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't long. That didn't take long. <laughs> tell tell me about it. It was quite it. I want to hear. Oh, that was the morning that I took when. Uh, let's see. Wendy went with me. No. Oh, Wendy, there. No. Wendy drove a car over to uh, Bruce's to have it fixed, right? And I was going to pick you up, but... No, we were going to go do errands. Yeah, we were going to do errands, but I said, oh, I couldn't because I had the diarrhea. Best thing I might ever have, my, best time I ever had in my life with the diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So I came right home and I said, oh, God, i got to go to the bathroom and there's somebody up there waiting for me. There's a random strange car in the yard. I didn't know who it was. And then back right up to the garage. Uh, no, this time they weren't backed up to the garage. They were faced in towards the building when there's yeah. no windows. And I saw a man sitting over the seat. I didn't pay any, having any attention. And then I looked and this girl comes out of the out of the shed, out of the garage. And I said to her, oh, what are you looking for? She said, oh, I'm looking for my dear little doggy. I've lost my little doggy. And she says, uh, I, I think, I'm so afraid he'll get lost out here in the woods. And we only live two houses down the street. And I thought, oh, you're dreaming, kiddo. You're not living two houses down the street <laughs> unless Audie's shacking up with somebody that Bert doesn't know about. <laughs> I said, well, you better find him because if he's out here at night, the koi dogs will probably get him. And excuse me, I gotta go to the bathroom. So I rushed in the house. Just made it. And the telephone's ringing and it's Butch. And I said, look, I can't talk to you now. I gotta go up the hill and report a couple of them here in the yard. I in the garage, I in the stuff, I in the stuff I've got out in the shed. So, <clears throat> He said, I'll call you tonight. So I went up to the hill and George Dow was on and we played, he used to play cribbage and all. He said, hi, I said, look, I can't, I'm not gonna waste any time, but I've just had a couple at the house and while these boys are riding the streets, keep their eyes open for a dark green or black sedan, you know, probably 20 years old, but, uh, New and I think it's got, yeah, I think it's got Massachusetts plates. Oh, yeah. Well, it didn't. It had, it had New Hampshire okay. plates on it. But, you know, in the spur of the moment, and rushing right, and right, tearing, because right. I was in agony, I, uh, I went right home. I stopped at Bradbury's, grabbed my mail, didn't even say <laughs> hello, goodbye, or anything to anybody in the store, and went right home. When I had come down over Crow Hill, this officer was sitting in the car talking on the phone, and I said, oh, I wonder what he's into. So I came right home, and as I went to go up the driveway, here's this car, and it's backed into the garage. And I said, oh, oh they're back again. And sure enough, neither one of them were in sight. So I said, oh, oh they have to be in the house. And I had locked the house, which I ruled the day that I locked it because it cost me $160 to fix the window, to have that window put back mm -hmm. in. I laid on the horn. I said, Gibby will hear me. And he'll we come didn't home. Hear you. He didn't hear a sound. I said, You idiot. <laughs> idiot. They can, they can have a gun or a, even a knife and kill you, you know. I didn't know what they had. I didn't know. I didn't even really see him because he was slouched over the wheel. Well, I looked in the rearview window as I'm still laying on the horn, and here comes the police officer that had been sitting on the hill, on Crow mm -hmm. Hill, and he came up the driveway and I said, Hallelujah, for once the police were on time. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got out just as a fellow comes running out of the house and he's got his hands full and he's dropping all this stuff and yeah, he's jewelry. running towards the car. Yeah, he had uh, he had coins and jewelry, but most of all, he had all my medicines. Yeah. And I did have oxycodone because I'd had it, but I had like five pills left that I didn't have to take. So the boy was Officer LaFlam and he got out and he, uh, he said, 
get down by your car to me. And he got the fellow down and he had it. Get down on the ground, get down on the ground. And he had his gun right on him. So he finally did get down on the ground and then he handcuffed him and got him in the car. And I said, there's a girl too, you know, there's a girl and she must be in the house. So at that time, he kept hollering into the house, come out with your hands up, come out with your hands up. But lo and behold, she had already come out while he was trying to get him down on the ground. He had, uh, the girl had come out <laughs> she didn't realize what a great swamp this was down here. <laughs> she was a mess, I guess. I didn't see her. She, no, because no, the police came over here. Yes. And that's how we woke up. We didn't hear anything that was going on. Oh. And, then, and well. then they came over here, and Gibby stayed here. And that's when I went over with you. Yes. And I was like mm -hmm. waving, and I was like, hi, Nan. So they didn't think that I was the girl, yeah. and I wore yeah. a black shirt instead of a pink yeah. one. But, uh, but she came out down here, down up the other road, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was in that swamp over there. Yeah. Right and, in front of the house. Yeah. And then um, Gibby saw something moving. Yeah. And he told her, he said, you better give yourself up yeah. because your buddy is giving it's himself over. up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Charlotte was with me. Well, after a while, I gave up hollering into the house. Laflamme came first. He was the officer that was on the hill. And then there was a plane car. And I, I guess that was the sergeant that came in that mm -hmm. car. And then there was another police officer that came. With the dog. Yeah. Yes, that's right. He had the dog to sniff the dogs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't you take their mail out of their car? Oh, yep. I did. <laughs> Medical bills and stuff. Uh, his car window was open. And, of course, I had pulled right up, bumper to bumper. I thought, you said the gun, you're not going to get out of here. <laughs> and, I, my bumper was right against his bumper. My front bumper was against, he was headed out so that he could make a fast getaway. Well, I saw a letter in the back seat and I can't even remember her name, but there was a name on it. And up in the corner it said, uh, Department of Health and Human Services, Lakeland or Lakewood or something, Florida. And I said, uh-oh, they were on the door. Uh, no wonder they're after drugs and stuff. So it was addressed to Sanford, Maine. And that's how I knew, you know, that they were from down from Sanford. But since then, I've been told, uh, Wendy, I think it was Wendy that told me that they were involved in 50 different robberies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked to the police department. Mm -hmm. Or me, yeah. yeah. So they were glad that I had gone up and told them, you know, that they were yeah. doing the area. Now, whether they were involved, see, Bert lost three buckets of coins here about, well, maybe three weeks before this happened to me, which was the 29th mm -hmm. of, uh, what was the 29th of uh, May? May? May. May. Yeah. 29th of May. And uh, I thought it was a fellow that had put him, been putting in that chimney, but it may have been this crowd because they were well roaming been. around, taking their pick. And since then, of course, you probably all heard it too. There's so many daytime robberies. These guys are coming out in the daytime because the houses are vacant and they're, yep. they're out of the house and they haven't locked it up. Because mm -hmm. no one locks their doors here because no, no one ever thinks that's going to happen. Well, all it is, we have the restaurant. We hardly ever locked it yeah. up. Hardly ever locked it at night. The kids, yeah. the kids would get in and they'd take ice cream or pie. Or <laughs> yeah. Well, I knew it, you know, and I'd hear them and I'd say, oh, those damn kids. <laughs> and I'd say, you damn kids, why don't you bring back some of the pie tins? <laughs> At least do oh. that. Yeah, and the face would get red and they'd say, she knows we're stealing pie. <laughs> she knows we're stealing pie. 